Okay, so Denver Broncos draft. This is, let's just phrase it this way. It's not what I would have done. So we'll just, we're just going to start it off with that. Uh, listen, I know everyone wants me to, you know, if you're a Broncos fan, you want me to come on and, and explain why I think that their draft was amazing and they're great. Uh, there's some good here. There's absolutely some good here. A little bit of great here. I think that they got a couple of late round steals in my opinion, but when it comes to drafts, a lot of it is, you know, especially draft grades. How well did you do with your first two selections? And I don't know if they got better as a team with these first two selections. They got some good players, but that's not getting better necessarily. So like for their first pick, Patrick Sertain, really what, what concerns me is, you know, listen, yes, he's physical. Yes, nobody throws the ball his way. He has great ball skills, really good fundamentals, smart player, all of that stuff. And all that fits in with the Vic Vangio defense, right? Because yes, my one concern has sort of been like his speed isn't necessarily the best. He ran a 4-4-6-40, which if you consider that that's a pro day time, that's it's it's a greater than 4-5 is his speed, which is concerning for a corner. That's very concerning. Typically, those types of corners don't last in the NFL. But the one exception is when they play a zone coverage, such as the Vic Vangio system, which is that cover three system. So that's kind of the, the reason why I don't hate the player and I don't hate the fit. I actually really like the fit. The issue is just they had plenty of corners. Uh, yeah, maybe they don't have a corner for the future, but guess what? They might be in a completely new system next year where then certain wouldn't be able to thrive. So, cause Vic Vangio might be fired if they don't have success and they're going with Teddy Bridgewater when you could have gotten Mac Jones or Justin Fields. And I guess my confusion is, okay, if you don't like Justin Fields because you say, oh, well, you know, he has kind of some inconsistencies with his, you know, throwing motion. He's not the most, uh, not the best at pocket presence while he can move around, doesn't pick up blitzes and things like that too quickly. If you dislike Fields for those reasons, well, then you should like Mac Jones because he is like the complete opposite type of player. So like no matter what you look for in a quarterback, I don't see how you dislike both of them because it seems like one of them is going to have the traits that you look for. So they must just be fine with Bridgewater. But I don't know, man. I think that's a huge risk. Bridgewater's not an awful quarterback. And I think Denver could actually still be okay next year. Like, I don't think that they're going to be awful. But it just feels like you could have – it's it's hard to imagine this team, like, seriously competing for a Super Bowl, you know? And it would be a lot easier if they had that franchise quarterback. It just would. And pick two, Javante Williams, when, you know, they have Melvin Gordon. Uh, they let Phillip Lindsay walk. Why are you drafting a running back early in the second round when – and again, it's not a Javante. This isn't a Javante Williams thing. I think he's he's a good player. He's not my favorite halfback because that's mostly just due to his he's he's concerned me with some of his blocking, which hasn't been the best. But he's a very good runner of the football, which is typically why halfbacks get drafted. I just value blocking more than other people do. So it's not the player. It's just again, you could have you could have easily if you want a zone corner, Asante Samuel would have been available in the second round to get your quarterback in the first and just deal with Melvin Gordon being you know your halfback or drafting a running back later on. With, you know they end up with a plethora of picks. So I just it's just not again. I hopefully I'm wrong because I think Denver's it's cool when Denver is good. They are this historic franchise, but. It's not what I would have done. I, I just got to be honest. So then they go guard in the third with Quinn uh, Mernes, I believe is how you say it. We'll just call him Quinn. This seems like a good pick. Uh, he's, you know, did not play last year due to the pandemic. And uh, I don't know if they need a guard necessarily. They could probably use an upgrade with Reisner, but Graham Glasgow is is good. Uh, maybe not elite, but he's probably just probably one step below it. He's really good. Uh, maybe this is a center pick so they can move someone to center uh, with, you know, Lloyd Cushenberry did not have a good uh, rookie season to say the least. And, you know, he was a third round pick. Like we didn't expect him to come out of the gate and just be awesome. A uh, third round pick. That's kind of what he played. Like I would say maybe a little bit lower than a third round pick. Well, now they have another third round pick. So, and, but this time it's a little bit different because of the deep offensive line draft. Third round picks kind of feel like second round picks in this draft when it comes to uh, offensive linemen. So that's kind of the hope here is, again, you're getting another guy in the room, and that's kind of what you do with a lot of these later picks after the first two rounds. They then went out and got Baron Browning, who kind of seems like the kind of guy who can play coverage or rush to pass or can be sort of this, you know, sort of hybrid kind of does any he can be a linebacker no matter what scheme you're running type of guy. 
So, you know, seems like he measures well, 245 pounds and still ran a, a four five, six, which is good. Uh, and you got third round talent, not really a position of need necessarily, but Hey, get a good player. And you're going to see this a lot. I think with the rest of the Denver Broncos picks is they don't necessarily always pick, uh, the, you know, perfect fit, but they just kind of focus on the best player. So like for the next two picks, Caden Stearns, who's a safety, he seems like he's probably going to be more of a uh, special teams guy. I think that he might even be lower on the, the depth chart than Jamar Johnson in terms of safeties. Because Jamar Johnson, uh, I still get, I don't get how he fell so far. Uh, he seems like he has a lot of really good on his tape. So I don't really understand this. There's some issues. There absolutely is some issues. I get it. I'm not like saying, how could he pop? Like, I get why he, you know, wasn't a day two pick, but I thought he would have been a day two pick. I thought he could have been a day one pick, honestly, because I think that there's the good outweighs the bad. And again, someone like him can at least be a really good special teamer, which I think will definitely get him on the roster. And I think that, you know, again, some of his safety tape, the issue was just the single safety deep. Do you want him there? I feel like I like, I would like him better as like a cover two safety than a cover one safety, but uh, I, I think it's good value. So I like this pick and same thing with like Seth Williams. He's not a guy that they necessarily needed, but there's a lot of talent with Seth Williams. I think that he's a, he's, he made my top 10 wide receiver list. He was number 10, but he was there. So to me, this feels like kind of a steal. He's this big guy who can absolutely, uh, you know, make something happen. So again, steal here. I feel like Denver did a really good job of maximizing their value with these late round picks. They also in the seventh got Kerry Vincent Jr., who I don't know much about, but you know, is a really fast guy. Uh, he was a track guy. It ran a sub four, four again, pro day time, but still, uh, it seems like he's definitely pretty quick. So could at least maybe play special teams. He also had four interceptions with LSU when they won the national championship in 2019. He didn't play in 2020. This feels like a great flyer pick. See what he can do. Maybe he can be a good player. Uh, maybe he can't. I don't know. But there's there's intrigue there. Uh, you also have Jonathan Cooper, defensive end, who's, uh, you know, a big guy over 250 pounds. So you can get sort of this, uh, I, I, you know, again, I don't know a ton of tape on guys like him and Marquis Spencer, but these are guys who, you know, there's potential. Hopefully you can figure something out, take flyers on them. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I've been, I've spent, you know, hours and hours uh, looking at tape for Jonathan Cooper or Marquise Spencer. But again, getting some guys here, it looks like Spencer. One of the interesting things about him is he's sort of a guy who sort of falls a little bit because of injury history. So maybe you're getting, you know, not an awful flyer there in the seventh, but yeah. So that's what I think of their draft. It's an up and down draft. Everyone's criticizing it. There are things to criticize. There's also things to like, though. And again, if you look past just the first two rounds, if if they, you know, I think a lot of people, honestly, if they drafted like a corner in round two, if they really wanted a corner, or if they just drafted like, uh, you know, a quarterback in that first pick, if they drafted Mac Jones or Justin Fields, I think everyone is saying, wow, what a great draft by Denver. They're like winners. It's just the quarterback situation. Maybe they still have faith in Drew Locke to turn it around. I don't know, maybe, uh, but again, that's the only real issue I have with the draft is just sort of their first two picks, which in fairness is the most important part of the draft. So anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.